Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you have been around for a while, you know that I use colored pencils quite a lot and I get a lot of questions about colored pencils. And I had the idea to do kind of a, a tips on colored pencils. I've done a lot of more in-depth how-to that show like actually using them, but I thought I would do a video that has just kind of a broad overview of some things that I find really helpful when working with colored pencils. To me, they seem kind of obvious but I've been using colored pencils for a long time and I sat back to think like, oh, actually these were things that I had to take time to learn. So um, maybe some of these, actually I'm sure some of these you already will know, but hopefully there'll be one or two that are new for you or especially if you are just getting started in colored pencils and you're brand new, maybe uh, several of these will be really helpful and can hopefully save you some time, uh, some of the time and frustration that I had when I first started working with colored pencils. Okay, so the first tip is to use colored pencils for your sketch. So if you have experience in working with a medium like oil paint or acrylic, you will know that really your entire sketch, I mean, I guess depending on your execution, but for the most part, your entire sketch is going to get covered up with paint. So it really doesn't matter how messy or how tidy your sketch is, how heavy your lines are, how dark they are. Uh, if you use graphite, if you use charcoal, really whatever, it's all going to get covered up with paint in the end. But colored pencils, while they can be opaque, they are not opaque enough to cover up sketches with really heavy lines. So another way that you can get around this is to use colored pencils for your actual sketch itself. So either you could do like a really messy sketch on um, a piece of scrap paper or maybe take a sketch that's from your sketchbook and then trace it, transfer it onto your uh, fine art paper using your window or using a light box. But then rather than transferring it with a graphite pencil, just use a really, really sharp colored pencil that's similar in color to your subject. So if you're doing uh, a portrait, you might use like a lighter peach color. Uh, if you're doing something that is organic and green, you might use green. Uh, if you're doing food, whatever color the food is, you get the idea. But uh, choose a color that's going to be easy to blend in with your ultimate finished piece. And if you're worried about being able to erase or if you don't have a sketch and you just want to create your sketch right on your paper and you want to be able to erase it so that it's perfect, you can use an erasable colored pencil. I'm sure there are different brands Brands, but the one I know and familiar with is Prismacolor Color Erase. So uh, that would enable you to create something that's with a colored pencil, but still erasable like graphite. And then one final tip on this point, this is more of a, of a tip of a hack for watercolor, but you can use actual watercolor pencils for your sketch for watercolor paintings, because then when you get the that line wet, when you're working with the watercolor, it'll just dissolve and disappear right into your, uh, right into your watercolor painting. Second tip is is to uh, choose your colored pencil palette before you get started. So if you're working with colored pencils and you're like me, you probably just keep them all in a big box or maybe you're one of those amazing people who organizes them by color. Uh, if you are, I salute you. I have not gotten to that point yet and I work with colored pencils almost every day. Uh, but the thing for me that is really, really helpful is when I'm starting on a piece, I'll look at my reference that I'm working from and kind of put together my palette the same way I would if I was working with oil paint. So uh, for not, not for all painters, I'm sure, but for many oil painters, uh, you will actually take time at the beginning of creating your piece to sit down and look at your reference and mix up all the colors that you're going to need. So that when it comes time to actually paint, you're not figuring out what you need. You're not doing any mixing. You're just pulling from that palette and uh, getting it right onto your canvas, right onto your substrate. So uh, same is true for colored pencils. Rather than trying to dig through your entire box, because probably most pieces you're you're not going to use every single color you have. Uh, it's just helpful to spend a few minutes at the beginning and choose the colors that you want, pull those ones out, and then put the other ones away. And of course, if you find that you need something else, you can always go back for it later. But having that dedicated palette just makes it a lot quicker and easier to work from. The third tip is to actually test your colors. So this may seem obvious, but if you haven't worked with colored pencils before, sometimes what's on the outside of the pencil doesn't exactly match the color of the pigment that comes uh, from the core. So taking time, I usually like to do this when I'm working, uh, when I'm putting together my palette, taking time to actually test out your colored pencils on little tiny strips of the same paper that you're going to be working on ultimately and comparing those to your reference. That's going to save you a lot of time and frustration in the end. For me at this point, I have a lot of familiarity with pretty much the whole range of Prismacolor pencils. 
So uh, for those ones, I don't need to do as much testing, but when I'm working with like Rembrandt's or Coranda Ash or Derwent, any other brand, I'm not quite as familiar with those lines. So I actually will take time in that case to test on swatches just to make sure it looks the way that I want it to before I lay it down. And uh, if you don't know this already, colored pencils are just not a very forgiving medium. They're a great medium. I love working with them. But uh, when you get something laid down in your paper, you really do need to be ready to commit to it. So uh, that's just even more reason to, to test before you lay down. All right, tip number four is to have a variety of sharpeners. So this is true both because different colored pencils are different thicknesses. So I mentioned the luminance colored pencils, the Coranda Ash Luminance. I have the full set of those and they're just like a, a bit thicker, a bit fatter than the Prism Color pencils. So I have to use a different sharpener for those. But also for uh, any soft core pencils, but especially for Prismacolor, uh, they can have a tendency to break. And I find that once the pencil starts breaking, it's more prone to crumble. It's more prone to continue breaking. And that's so exasperating because you're just spending all this time sharpening and wasting all this media. And my number one trick for getting around that is to switch sharpeners. So if I've used my um, sort of holy grail sharpener, which is the Alvin Brass Bullet, I will try to show it on the screen. Uh, if I've used that then uh, and my pencil keeps breaking, then I'll switch to an electric sharpener or I'll switch to the Prismacolor sharpener. I'll try try something different. And a lot of the time that's enough to just a slight change in shape of the sharpener is enough to stop it from breaking. So I don't know for sure why that works, but it works for me. So have a few different sharpeners on hand. Uh, tip number five is to choose the right pencil for the job. So uh, there are, as I've already mentioned, lots of different colored pencils. I have not by any means tested all of them. I haven't used all of them, but uh, I would say it is really important to have a sense of of the kind of look that you're going for. So for me, I always want my pieces to look mm, like a painting and I kind of want people to wonder like, what was that made with? Like, was it made with watercolors? Was it made with clear pencil? Was it made with oil? Uh, I like having that sense of not being sure what the piece was made out of. So I really want a very creamy pencil, a pencil that's easy to blend, a pencil that has a really thick um, kind of luscious pigment lay down. So for me, Prisma colors are great and luminance are great. Uh, I also have Verathins and I have some Rembrandts and I've tried out Polychromos as well. And those all have different sharpnesses, uh, different um, densities. So they're easy to get to a different sharpness. So the challenge with a nice creamy pencil like a Prismacolor is it really doesn't hold the point very well. So if you want to do something that has a lot of really, really fine detail, like maybe um, very realistic botanical illustration or um, pet portraits, uh, something that has lots of little filaments and little bits and has really, really clean edges, you might need to use a harder pencil like Polychromos or like Verithin. Uh, whereas if you're like me and you want it to look kind of painterly, then you might be okay with a softer pencil. So choose the right pencil for the job. If you have time and you're able to go to the art supply store and kind of test out some different pencils, give that a try. And if you're finding that you really can't create the effect that you want with the pencil that you have, uh, it may be because you need to have a different kind of pencil. All right. Tip number six is uh, similar. It's to use the right paper. So you can use colored pencils really on any kind of paper that you want. Uh, there, there, you don't have to have a specific color colored pencil paper, but using it on different kinds of paper is going to have different effects. So if you work on a hot pressed paper or a really smooth paper, you're going to be able to get a lot more detail because the paper doesn't have those little dips and ridges that it does if it's like a cold pressed or a rough watercolor paper. So that can again be really good for more refined work like pet portraits or people portraits even, something where you want to have a lot, a lot of little detail. And I also tend to choose a more, a, a smoother paper a more refined paper if I'm going to be working smaller, since working smaller can also be uh, tricky then to get in the level of detail. So if I'm doing that combination of small and smooth paper, that just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, the downside of a smooth paper is that you're not going to be able to load it up with quite as much pigment. So those papers that are really textured that have the, have the little dips, uh, we call them, we call it tooth. We call that texture tooth that have a lot of tooth to the paper. The nice thing is you can, by rubbing the pencil back and forth over 
over and over again, you can get a lot of pigment down in the tooth of that paper. So if I want something to look really painterly, if I want to have like a really kind of, um, if I want to have a lot of pigment on there to blend with, then I actually might be more apt to reach for a textured paper just because I can get a lot more down on the paper. So uh, have a sense, if you have a sense of what your ultimate goal is, how you want to work with it, what you want the look to be, be sure to choose the type of paper that's going to work well for the job. All right, tip number seven is to start with an underpainting or an underlayer of color. So a big problem, a big question I hear all the time from people who are working with colored pencils is how to, uh, they want to know how to get rid of the little white uh, areas that kind of show through the paper, the texture of the paper. There are lots of different ways that you can do that, but one very easy way to do that, my probably favorite way to do that is to start with an underpainting. So there's lots of different things you can use. You could use watercolor pencils, you could use watercolor, you could use um, marker, something like a Copic, uh, just as a way to get down a basic layer of color. So you look at your subject and figure out, okay, say if you're doing a portrait of a Caucasian person, like if I'm doing a self-portrait, I might choose like a really soft, um, probably pretty light because I'm super pale, uh, overall peach color that I would just lay down everywhere. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that I can focus more on building up the areas that are light on top of that and then pushing back the areas that are dark rather than having to spend a ton of time building up the mid-tone and covering up all those little white bits of paper. Tip number eight is kind of related and that is to blend your colored pencils. So say if you don't want to use an underpainting or maybe even you did have an underpainting but you want to achieve a certain look, Colored pencils uh, can have a, a totally different feel, a totally different look if you blend them. And you could do like a blending with a solvent. I use Gamsol. If you've watched this channel for a while, you probably know that I uh, really like it a lot. With all solvents, you wanna be really careful and work in a well-ventilated area, etc. But Gamsol is kind of the safest of the bunch. So uh, that's the one that I prefer to use. And I, fi I find that it really works well and gives me a really kind of creamy look. And what it does is the solvent solvent dissolves the binder. So whether it's wax or oil, uh, it dissolves the binder that holds the pigment together. So you can just kind of move it around freely with a brush. If you don't want to use a solvent, you can also burnish. Uh, and essentially that means like pressing really hard in really, really little tiny uh, movements, really even movements with your pencil to push the pigment down further into the paper and to blend it with the pigment that's nearby. And of course, if you don't want to blend, that's fine too. You'll just end up with a more textural look. Uh, maybe there's some different little bits of paper showing through or some of the color showing through from un underneath from different layers. Uh, but if you want that smoother look, try either blending with a solvent or blending with burnishing. All right, tip number nine is to work fat over lean. If you're familiar with art terms, you probably have heard this before, but essentially that means to put down the thin layers first before you put down the heavy layers. So don't go right in there and just like press as hard as you can with your pencil from the very beginning. It's going to damage the paper. It's going to make it hard harder to layer and blend. Um, those strokes are going to be really, really visible and it's just not going to leave you a lot of flexibility for working down the road. So start with doing really soft layers and just add gradually more and more and don't do anything that would resemble burnishing. So don't be pressing really hard with your pencil until you're really close to the very end of the piece. So fat over lean is going to enable you to do that. All right. And the last tip is to use up the whole pencil. And again, this seemed obvious to me, but I didn't find out about these things until quite a while after I was working uh, with colored pencil and a disadvantage of colored pencil is that as you use up more and more of a color you have a shorter and shorter pencil and it gets really hard to hold on to. So there are these amazing things called pencil extenders and you can get them on Amazon or at Blick or really wherever and what they enable you to do is to comfortably hold your pencil so you can use up that very very last little bit. And if you are super committed to that and you want to use up every ounce of your pencil, you can take that little bit of pencil and actually super glue it to the end of another pencil. I was told this tip by a viewer years ago, and I wish I could remember who it was because I would give them credit. But if you're watching this, you know who you are. Please put your name in the comment. And uh, yes, I will try to give you a shout out in a future video. But uh, what that enables you to do is to sharpen really to the very, very end of the pencil, because even with a pencil extender, there will still be a teeny tiny little bit left at the end. And I just 
just tend to save all those. I have a big jar of them. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I have those. But if you wanna use yours up, you can glue it to the end of another pencil, wait till it dries, and then you can just hold that pencil and draw with it. So uh, those are my 10 tips for working with colored pencils. If you have other tips, if you're a colored pencil artist and you have things that work for you, please leave them. Please comment and leave those tips in the comment section. Um, if you have any questions about colored pencils or really any other art related, illustration related questions, anything that you want me to address in a future video, please leave that in the comments too. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please consider sharing it with somebody. That's a great way to help support this channel. And if you're looking to take your support to the next level, you can consider supporting on Patreon. Patreon, I have a lot of different things over there. We do monthly critiques with my patrons. Um, I share more in depth behind the scenes on client projects. I'm going to be starting doing some coaching in, uh, in the new year as well. So I'm, I regularly roll out new stuff and test out new stuff. So my patrons, they support this channel financially and they make it possible for me to hire a video editor. So really all the support that is there on Patreon goes into supporting this channel and making it possible for me to put videos out there on a weekly basis. So patrons, uh, thank you so much for your support. And of course, thank you to Meg as well. I forgot to mention that. Sorry, Meg, uh, for editing this video. And I hope everybody has a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.